Sure. Most jurors, when they hear and see stuff that they truly can't believe they're being exposed to, their first reaction is to look instantly over at the person accused right. because they can't imagine this. They can't imagine it. I mean, Alex, you're an uncle. And the, the whole conspiracy here is that, that the uncle of these children might have actually been involved in this act. It's just, it's hard to process that a mother, an uncle, yeah. who knows about Chad, but it's just so incredible to think that they could have done this. And I would say that just about every single person in this courtroom is putting themselves in that position. It's so hard not to, right? If you have children of your own, if you have nieces, nephews, right, you're putting yourself in that position. And it is just so hard to imagine this happening to these young children. And as you said, Ashley, some jury members just couldn't take it. The one closest to me, I have a direct line of sight at him. He is really taking it hard. He had to turn away so many times just because of the graphic nature of these images that we're seeing. And really, it's hard to fathom, right? This little boy's body bound with plastic bags so close to his face that he, he suffocated, uh, you know, within minutes. And so it's just so hard to comprehend because you put yourself into it. But then when you're forced to look at it because it's your duty, it just becomes yeah. too much. Well, the, the clawing, to, to me, I, you know, I was hoping in some way, I was just hoping that maybe it was painless or he'd been drugged or something, but the clawing just, right. just sent me over the edge today. I want to just, I want to do this if I can. Uh, the pathologist actually had, you know, cross-examination, right? That's a hard one. You got the pathologist saying this, and now Lori's attorney has to cross-examine, and it seemed as though there was something super inappropriate about this, almost like, almost like the defense attorney was trying to be funny or suggest that this is something out of the movies. Let me play the soundbite real quick. Uh, here it is. Take a look. Did you collect any evidence um, inside the sinuses? Did you swab the sinuses and pull out any evidence? No. So how is it that you're coming to the conclusion that this person was smothered with a plastic bag? Right. So um, going back, so JJ was found with a plastic bag over his head. Um, that was duct taped tightly. He was bound. There was evidence of a struggle, and there was no other explanation of why he was dead. You find zero reason for them to be dead, then it's reasonable to conclude that that was the cause of death. Okay, but you, let's, let's back up a little bit. When I talked about swabbing the sinuses or swabbing the nasal cavity, you didn't do that? I've never heard anybody doing that in this type of situation. Okay, what type of situation are you talking about? Uh, bag over the head. Okay. So when someone has a bag over their head and they are, and I'm just going off of things I've seen in movies and whatnot, it seems that's like. That's scary. That's scary to you? Yeah, but you're going off movies. Okay. Well, that's distressing. You know, I. I know that you had a chance once again to speak with Rex Connor. That's Lori's uncle, who is sitting in prosecution row. And this had to be horrible for him as well. Um, how did that interview go? Well, the very interesting thing about Rex Connor, Lori's uncle, is that he is being very open to speaking with us in the media. He comes out, and at first, uh, you know, a couple days ago, I chased him down and, and got a word with him. But now he's coming out, and he's speaking right to us. And he told us it's almost cathartic for him to actually process this and speak about it out loud. He's here with his three daughters, Lori's cousins, and he says during lunch they also speak about it and they talk about it because it's helping them with their healing. So in general, while this is incredibly hard for everyone, so much so that he chose not to look at the pictures even though they were offered to the victim's family, at the same time he's seeing a tremendous amount of healing. Uh, here's some sound from him after today's proceedings. Talk it's a that. lifetime experience, a very positive experience being with my daughters. The way we deal with this the best we can is we process, we talk with each other. Everyone that's heard this story has been touched by it, and we all want closure. We all want comfort somehow. We all want, want to make sense of, like I said, this something that's so far beyond evil that it's, uh, you just can't comprehend it. So really, I got to give it up to Rex because not only is he here, you know, facing the reality of what his uh, family members allegedly has done, but also uh, confronting it head on by speaking about it. And also, really, his main point is he wants to see justice for JJ, for Tylee, for Charles, and for Tammy. That's really his main point. He wants to see justice come down uh, and see someone, whoever's done this horrific act, be held accountable.
Alex Capriello, thank you for doing this today, um, particularly today of all days. And I just, I encourage you to meditate, uh, talk to someone, to, you know, you can't unsee what you've seen, but, you know, God bless you for doing this. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.